Good afternoon, 2 p.m., time for Bible study. Genesis chapter... Sixteen. We'll wait for a few people to get here. Glad to have Pastor Finker covering yesterday. He is just so profoundly intelligent. What a gift from God he is to be um, in our midst. One second. Nice catch, buddy. That's the way you do it. It's Will Robinson. Danger. Robinson family. So, time to do just two shares, and then we'll be hauling the mail. Good afternoon, Steve. The Lord be with you. I hope you had a great week. I hope you had a great weekend. Hi, Felicity. The Lord be with you. We are in Genesis chapter... Um, Genesis chapter 15. Nope, 16. 16. We're going to talk a little bit about the covenant today. Um, but Pastor Finker did such a bang on job that um, really there's um, nothing to redo. He was, he's just, I mean, an amazing teacher. an amazing teacher. Um, hope you all uh, had a great weekend. I hope you rested well. Uh, friends and family um, getting together, social distancing and all that. Hi, Jamie. The Lord be with you. All right. Time to rock and roll. Let's go. Oh, look, it's Jacoby. Good day. Good day. Hi, Gene. All right. And Bobby Joe's here as well. So we're looking at 16. Good catch, buddy. You got it down. Good catch. All right. So let's check out 16. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, Yelada, she um, bore no children. Now, remember, oops, short toss. Remember last chapter we had um, the covenant. And um, we had Abraham and God um, cutting a deal. And this deal is, oops, over the top. This deal is, 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 is caught. But the cutting of this covenant is one-sided. Um, God's going to give something. Abraham's going to receive it. And the one who passes through the dead animal, because covenants were cut back in the day. There's a treat back there. Hi, Gail. The Lord be with you. Happy Tuesday. You, you, you doing all right there back there, buddy? Yeah, the things we'll do for a treat. Back in your bed, bud. Now we're stuck back there. So the one who passes through as a, as a light, as a torch, is the Lord God himself. The one who's, who's risking life and limb, the one who's risking death if this covenant is broken, is God. The one who says he's going to die if this covenant is broken is God. Ancient people cut covenants, they made deals, and what was on the line was the most important thing get to that with the, the circumcision in a bit. Get in the bed, bud. In the bed. In the bed. Good boy. He's in a rare form today. Hi, Grace. The Lord be with you. Um, so, Abraham cuts this covenant that God has made him a promise. Look toward the heavens and see if you can number the stars. If you are able to number them, so shall your offspring be. And Abraham believed God, verse 5. I'm sorry, verse 6. And God counted him as righteous. Zadik. I'm sorry. 
uh, Zadokah. So um, he's righteous because of the of believing the promise. This is so important with the next section. Could we make a covenant with God now? No need to. God's made a deal. No need to renegotiate it, Rob. The deal's great. You get salvation in Christ. And um, and you believe that and are saved. It seems like a good deal. So why would we, why would we need a change in that? Hi, buddy. Good boy. So... Th th this is what's so great about it. So God cuts a deal. God puts himself on the line. Not Abram. Himself. And the promise is, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Can you see the stars? Can you number them? And his torch passes between the in, in the midst of the dead animal. It is the ultimate deal. Right. All the other deals that God has made, we've failed. And, and this one, hello, come on. In there. Boy, you are just peppy today. Good boy. Yes, it was cross-sealed. That's why there's no need to make any more deals with God. If you get me out of this, then I will. Because the deal that is currently in place is better than all the other deals that we could have come up with. Okay? I'm going to be your God. You're going to be my people. What would you say if somebody believed we must make a new covenant which we keep by our obedience to the Ten Commandments? Well, I would say that the covenant that went before trumps that one, Rob. So the previous deal is better than that one. And that's the argument that Paul's going to make pertaining to the same covenant that you're saying that somebody wants us to do. Good day, good questions. All right. So Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. So God makes this promise. You got to see the stars, as numerous as the stars in the sky, as suns in the hourglass, so are the gifts that I'm going to give you. That was short. Good questions, Rob. Um, because it's, and what's so great about yesterday's class with the bearded one um, is that the idea that somehow this is a law covenant, that God's putting them under the law is just plain wrong. Hi, Maggie. The Lord be with you. Oh, you missed it, buddy. So the idea that um, God's made a covenant uh, of law is totally wrecked by... Ooh, heat advisor until 7. Do you know <coughs> the high today in Louisiana is somewhere in the neighborhood of 98? It's currently 95 right now. It's hot out there. And it's going to get to 97. That's what it is. It's not law, gospel, law. It's gospel, law, gospel. So the idea that everybody's trying to get back under the law or everybody's trying to get the law done is just not inherently Christian. That is just not Christian. That's just not Christian. Somebody hit the sad icon. I'm sad too. I'm sad too. So the um, uh, this is a gospel covenant. I'm going to be your God. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to be your God. I'm going to I'm going to make you the father of many many nations. I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people. And it's and, and and in the face of that promise is Sarah and Sarah's like my biological clock is ticking like this. And seriously it is. Well what's up buddy? Come on up here buddy. I got some treats for you. Ah, you can make my whoops, not the most smoothest picker up pick me up, but still Slip it down, bud. Get, get, oh, careful there, man. Careful. Um, so the so the so um the idea that 
this is all about law, is just plain wrong. Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous. So a new covenant or a new rule, say, you know, 400 and something plus laws, isn't going to trump this old covenant made by God. And yes, Rob, Sarah's biological clock is broke. And and Grace, you've got the reference. Great job. Great job. So she looks at her life and she sees that she has an Egyptian, Mitzrayim, uh, an Egyptian um, uh, a female servant named Hagar. Oh, nothing can go wrong with this. Absolutely nothing can go wrong with this. See, we're going to help God along the way. Nice double catch, buddy. Um, so, uh, we're going to help God with his problem. So, your descendants are going to be in, as numerous as the, as the sand in, on, the, on the beach or the stars in the sky. Good catch, buddy. So, your, your stuff is going to be as numerous as that. And, um, I guess this, that, there's nothing in there, buddy. Um, and she looks at her life and sees nothing capable of bringing that reality into focus. And so she looks at Hagar, her Egyptian uh, slave, which she probably, or servant, which she probably picked up in Egypt when they were there, when she was in Pharaoh's house. And Sarah said to, um, Sarai said to Abraham, I'm sorry, let's try that again. Sarai said to Abram, behold, the Lord has, he's, um, he's kept me, he's hindered me. He stopped me from, from bearing children. All right. This is so graphic, you're going to have to help me out because there's no way of doing it, of <laughs> saying it without it sounding graphic. So we're going to give you the PG-13 warning. You missed that. Nice catch, buddy. We'll give you the, the PG-13 warning. So this is about to get PG-13. Let's get out of you, varmint. So, behold now, the Lord has, has hindered me from bearing children. So, um, Boe is, um, is, the, uh, is the Hebrew word for to come. Okay. Um, you know, I don't... Erica, I don't know whether or not uh, Sarah is blaming God. I, I mean, she is, but I don't know if it's, if this is done in un, if the sentence is in unfaith, the action is unfaith. It's unbelief. Uh, the, the sentence could be, this simply isn't a gift the Lord has given me. He's prevented me from bearing children. Also notice that she doesn't, hi, Colonel Davis, the Lord be with you. Notice that she doesn't, um, She doesn't say the devil's keeping her from it or sin's keeping her from it. It's Yahweh that's keeping her from it. And I think he's driving her to trust him. But this little episode ain't helpful. Come together with my servant right now. Um... It may be that I shall obtain children by her. Yeah. What does Abram do? Abram listens to the voice of Sarai, which is the same thing Adam did. And you and, 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 and if you have a low opinion of Abraham in this moment, you should. Because Abram should stop her and say, you know what the answer to this problem is that we trust God. I only have these two left. Little cute guy. What is it? Is it you... Go eat your food. Go eat your food. Go eat your food. It ain't treat day. You got food. Go eat it. Good boy. Now go. 
Oh, he's going to, oh no, this is bad. Yes, Rob, this is echoing the language of Adam. All right, the idea is like, um, is go to my servant. She'll have the, she'll be the father of many nations. And he listened to the voice. Can you imagine that? Well, you don't have to tell me twice to sleep with, with Hagar. You're going to let me sleep with somebody other than you? Well, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to do this for you, sweetheart. I mean, it's just, it's just a hot mess. And it's caused by unbelief and helping God along in his promises. Yep. 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 First he warned it, Thor. and um, Thor warned it on Facebook and now it's, it's happening. It's like a bad dream. But I am prepared today to stop the squeaks at the source. Um, we are going to give him some of his favorite treats, and that is going to stop the squeak, uh, the, the uh, stuff at the source. Um, so the, um, if you ever want to get treats for Thor, this is his favorite. He loves the triple treat. The, um, so like, what I, what I want you to do is I want you to, to see this for what it is. This is a repeat of the same... Um, the same crazy, I imagine that, I, bet, I imagine the mic really picked up that scissors. The same crazy sinful thing, hi, hi Doris, the same crazy sinful thing which caused the, oh man, I am covered in fur, which caused the disaster. I misspoke? What are you talking about? Um, the, the, the disaster which occurs, um, oh, who's trained whom? Yeah, my training's going well. Um, the disaster which is the fall into sin is the same disaster which is about to occur here. This is going to be a hot mess caused by them trying to help God out. It's just a mess. Look, trust God. He's going to do good. He doesn't need your help to do good to you. All right? This idea that you're going to help him is a mess. Oh, oh, oh. The servant will be the... Yeah, she thinks that through the servant, through the servant, the problem's going to be fulfilled. God doesn't need your help to do the good that he wants to do in your life. Um, This is much the same as looking at the picture of Jesus knocking at the door. It's like the door, he can't open the door because there's no doorknob painted on the door. And so you have to open the door of your heart to let Jesus in. Well, hey buddy, let's be calm. These are his favorite kind of treats. So he's, um, so he's, he's, uh, uh, you can't blame him for, for being, um, sit. Sit and be patient. Get in your bed. Get in your bed. Get in your bed. That's a good boy. And wait. Um, so they're going to help God along with this. So go into my servant. So Abraham had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan. Sarah, Abram's wife. Okay. This is the second repetition of Abram's wife being the description, um, being the description of um, Abrams of, of Sarah, and why? Why is why are we emphasize back in your bed? And and wait. Because this isn't kosher. This isn't kosher. And so Moses repeats and is emphatic about who Sarah is, Sarai is in order to let you know that that's his wife. Sarai, Abram's wife. So Abraham had lived 10 years in the land of Cana, Canaan. Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her servant. And gave her to her husband as a wife. 
Whoa. Back in the bed. Stay and wait. Um, with those crazy eyes, I tell you, this is his favorite treat. This and lasers, it, it's like crack to him. Oh, no, 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 no. Back in the bed and wait. We're having a little training session here in Bible class. So she gives her maidservant to Abraham and, 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 and he's like, no, no, baby, I do this for you. And here it is, PG-13, literally is what the text says. Let's go to verse 4. Um, and, and he went into Hagar. Like you go into the, to, to, to the building, um, he went into Hagar. That's what the language of this text is. So he went into Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she um, uh, looked with contempt. Um, that word means uh, uh, she um, she like made insignificant her mistress. So, I mean, if you're reading this and you're like, oh, I'm going to read the Bible in a year and um, um, it's going to be such a good book and it's going to make me better. No, you're going to see the lives of the patriarchs are just as bad as yours. Um, the very graphic nature. All we need is some mood music on, and that's what we get. Little Marvin Gaye. Um, uh, excuse me. You know where you should be. Back in your bed. Stay there and wait. 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 He knows that command. And the text itself is very, very, very clear on how icky this is by the repetition of Sarai, Abram's wife. Sarai, Abram's wife. Yes, Felicity, you picked a great time to come back. Um, and so when Mike, when she, when, she, when, when Hagar, um, when Hagar does this. She then despises Sarai. Well, duh. I I have a kid and you don't. I'll give it to you in five minutes. Wait. And so she says to Abram, you could just see it. You could see this happening. She said to Abram, um, Uh, may the wrong be done on me and you. Eh. Um, verse five, she says, um, wrong between me and you. What you think? I gave my servant to your embrace. That's not what the text says. That sounds so romantical, doesn't it? I gave the servant to your embrace. No, I gave the servant into your lap is what the um you're being a good boy you just wait there a little longer four more minutes and you got this lifetime wait 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 what a good boy you are get him eyeballing me um <laughs> and with your with your um left hand you're posting on facebook about how good you are um look Look at this wrong between me and you. I gave my servant into your lap. And now that she's conceived, she looks on me as insignificant. Right? Right? Three more minutes. Just wait. May the Lord judge between us. Between you and me. Well, you think this was a bad idea? And look, we haven't changed. I mean, we haven't changed. Our culture just continues to get worse. Um, people with open marriages, people allowing somebody else into their into their marriage, and then shocked and stunned that it's awful. You think this, 
well, this, we thought that it would better our relationship. No, it's not. It messes it up and makes it awful. Abram's response is like, is like best read, like, like he will avoid anything other than to be the blame for this. All you need to do is, is, is read this with also, um, um, I told you so. Like, I told you I didn't want to do this, but this was your idea. Behold, your servant is in your power. So what he says is, look, she's still a servant. Just because you let me like, um, it's the old 60s expression, why buy the milk, uh, why buy the cow when the milk's free? Just because the milk was free doesn't mean that she's still not a servant. You're, she's still a servant, so, so go do what you should do with servants. We're going to get to this because this is important. Um, slavery is all throughout the history of the world. People have been making people um, back in the bed, buddy. You almost made it. Back in the bed. And wait. It became impossible for him to do this. Two minutes. Wait. Um, yes, it's going on forever. Look at him. He's dying. He's over there. He's dying. Stay and wait. So you, you could read this and you're just like, Abraham's like, don't blame me for this. You handle this on your own. Okay? You do to her whatever you'd like. Okay? And so Sarah dealt harshly with her. Sarah did to Hagar what Hagar did to Sarah. And Sarah, and, and Hagar flees. Wait. The angel of the Lord, the Milak Yahweh, found her by a spring in water in the wilderness. The spring on the way to Shur. Well, Shur wasn't good and he found her. Stay in your bed. Stay in your bed. He likes to take this and he goes underneath things. Uh, 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 back in your bed. Thor, back in your bed. <whistles> Come on, boy. Come here, boy. Come. I'm going to have to go get that treat. Um, It was too much to ask him to stay in his bed. He likes to go underneath chairs to like so nobody takes his treat away. Um, he's very, very covetous of his treat. So, oh, Newman's here. Um, so the angel of the Lord finds her. So I was teaching you that Yahweh's Jesus. And that that, that is a, a, um, a very Lutheran understanding of it. But generally across the board, every Christian denomination recognizes the Milak Yahweh is Jesus. The angel of the Lord is Jesus. Um, the messenger of God. Because sometimes the messenger of the Lord the Milak Yahweh actually converses, talks, deals with people, and and acts as if Yahweh. They're almost interchangeable. The messenger and um, um, the messenger and the um, and the and Yahweh. So the Milak Yahweh finds her and says, um, "Hagar, servant of Sarai, where you come from and where are you going?" It's like Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Um, she says, I'm fleeing from my mistress, Sarai. Now, God is not pro-slavery. Um, because remember, he sent his son to be a slave in order to free all of us. He is for proper order. Um, he's for order. And so what he says to her um, needs to be translated properly. Um, 
so God doesn't wreck the social um, stuff. He's about saving people. And he will use the example of slavery to, um, to say his son is a suffering servant. Um, uh, so he's like, return to your mistress. Submit isn't a good, good word for it. Um, uh, verse nine, it's, um, um, it's, it's more like, um, return to her and humble yourself, um, under her hand. Okay. And that, and that, and that, that was the problem. The problem is not, um, that Sarah ran, uh, that Hagar ran away. It's that she suspised her, her mistress. She like the instant she became pregnant, she was like, um, I believe the proper term Sarai is meaner, meaner. Um, you know, it, and she despised and looked down on Sarah. And so you got God who's like, I'm going to make Isaac, Sarai's son, the father of my people. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you try to help me along with Hagar. And as soon as Hagar gets, gets the child... In her, in her belly, she um, she begins to despise Sarah, and so the Lord's like, "Go back home and put yourself under your mistress's hand." And the angel of the Lord also said to her, verse ten. I will uh, 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 I will multiply, multiply. Yeah, exactly, Grace. Play nice. You got the girls and they're fighting. And, and, and both of them have done to each other um, the same thing. Now you see why I waited so long? Um, and both of them did the same thing. Both of them did the same sin. They, they despised one another. Now, Sarai was in a place where she could do that, but it was still wrong. And, and Hagar wasn't in a place to do that. And, and should, and should, Hey, get in your bed, in your bed, in your bed, in your bed. Not through your bed. Did you just see him streak by? Thor, in your bed. Mama said there'd be days like this. There'd be days like this, my mama said. Um. Does anybody want a treat? Bring me that treat, that, that squeak toy, and I'll give you a treat. You want a treat? Well, give it to me. So, go back. But what he does with Ishmael is is important. Um, can I have Can I have the treat? Can I Can I have the sweet toy? Can I have it? Can I have it? Ooh, do you want this treat? Oh, there's a treat for you, and I got the sweet toy. All right. So, um, um, but you know what? I will multiply, multiply. Like I will. Uh, you will surely die. This is that construct where the verb is repeated. Um, for uh, for emphasis, um, um, I will surely multiply. I will multiply, multiply. Like if you eat of that tree, you will that that fruit, you will surely die. You will die, die. This is I will multiply, multiply your seed. So it cannot be a numbered multitude. So look at oh, just a second here. This was not the plan for the Savior. But this is a plan that's blessed by God because he has mercy on Hagar. Verse 
by the way, our Islamic friends, who are Arabs for the most part, um, and and Ishmael is the father of the modern day folks in that era. Era, if it's not, um, if that is not the proper term to use, I don't know. In this this day and age, the people living in the matter uh, in in the Middle East right now, um, for the most part, the Arabs, the Arab Arabic people, Ishmael is their dad. And God is merciful to Hagar. Get in your bed. In your bed. In your bed. In your bed. Thank you. God is merciful to Hagar, either for, uh, um, for Abraham's sake or because she was, she was looked down, even though... Back in your bed. Back in your bed. Back in your bed. And wait. Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. And his name shall be Ishmael. Well, let me know. Let me, let me tell you about Ishmael. Oops. We just literally changed versions. Um, Ishmael and, and Jacob are going to, um, um, are going to provide. Yeah, I know. I had a bad training day today, Doris. Don't judge. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna see in the New Testament what this is really all about. Okay, and this is really about Rob's question from earlier. Is it Rob or, or Donald? I don't know who, which one it is. Um, and um, but let's let's hear first what's going on. You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has listened to your affliction. So the Lord has heard your affliction and he loves Abraham and he's made a deal with Abraham that he's going to make him the father of many nations. And so he's going to bless your, um, he's going to bless your, your little one. He shall be a wild ass of a man. Um, uh, the Jews translate that Hebrew word, um, pere, as, as wild ass. Um, rude or rough is what the Septuagint uses. Um, Luther likes wild better, okay? So I think he'll be like a wild man, okay? Um, he's going to be like a wild man. Um, his hand's going to be against everyone and everyone's hand's going to be against him. So he raises his hand and fights with everyone, and everyone raises their hand and fights against him. And he shall dwell over and against all his kinsmen. So he's going to fight with everybody in the region, and he's going to raise his hand against them, and they're going to raise his hand against him, and they're going to go at it. And because he's going to be just a rough, rude kind of kind of kind of person. Um, and so like peace in the Middle East. Is next to impossible because it's been going on since. Oh no no no. Where are you supposed to be? Get back in that bed. In the bed. In the bed. Thank you. Sit and wait. So the so you get the you. You get the idea. So even. <laughs> start laughing because I just I just get this laughter because like the idea that somehow we're going to bring peace in the Middle East is just comical and as much as I at the orange president you know uh, no one has ever brought peace like me I I bring peace wherever I go I'm the I'm the peacefulest president and I'm going to go to the Middle East and I'm I'm going to make, we're going to make a, a big big deal and nobody's going to have made a deal like like we're going to make a deal and yeah this is not going to happen they're not going to be at peace ever for a time, maybe. But but all of Abram's kids are going to go at it. They're going to go at it for a while. Ishmael is going to be wild and rough. 
and he a, a, and and he's gonna he's gonna fight with his neighbors. He's gonna fight with his relatives. He's gonna fight with people, but he's gonna be a great nation. He's gonna be a great nation. And it, I hope that you don't take this in any way, shape, or form as me looking down on the Arabs. The the the, the um um. Um, it's, 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 it's huge, huge. Uh, uh, no one's made peace like this president's made peace. Everybody's talking about it. How great of a peace story I've made, but no, you're not going to make peace in the Middle East. It's just not going to happen. Not until the Lord returns. There'll be wars and rumors of wars because that's what's been going on ever, ever since, I don't know what this is, 4,000 BC. Um, Come here. What? Wait, 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 wait. Go get it. So the, um, so she, so she called on the name of the Lord who spoke to her and said, you are the God of seeing. Um, uh, what a, what a great, so like you saw my affliction, you are the God of seeing. You saw my affliction, you saw what happened to me. Um, and she says, uh, with some strange um, Hebrew, um, uh, Truly here I have seen him who looks at me. Uh, the Septuagint is Suhotheos um, ha epidon me. You are the God who sees me. And she said, um, um, I've been put into the presence of the one who sees me. Sees me. Who looks at my affliction and my pain. Even though, let's be honest, Hagar brought it upon herself. Hagar got pregnant and then looked at her husband, looked at her, looked at her mistress and was like, you know, there's the father right there. Um, but uh, and he sees her and he blesses her and he hears and he saves and she didn't deserve it this is by grace too the, 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 the Ishmaelites become great because of the mercy and grace of God the God who saves the God who saves Therefore, the well was called Bir La Ro, La, La I Roy, and it lies between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abraham called the son, name of the son, the name of his son, whom Hagar bore. All right, um, I, I, I want you to catch this. The repetition is always important, hugely important. Hugely important. Did I say it was huge? It's huge. Huge. All right. Um, I, I don't want you to miss this. Okay. I don't want you to miss this. So why the repetition? The repetition is there to tell you what's important. Ishmael is Hagar's son. Not the line of promise. Ishmael is Hagar's son. It's repeated. And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abraham called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. And Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore a Ishmael to Abraham. It's repeated three times. Just like Sarai being the wife of Abraham was repeated multiple times up top. This is important. Ishmael will not be the line of importance. That's not what God promised. Yeah, Abraham in the in the in the big sense is um, did 
don't let Newman get to you. Abraham in the large sense, Hagar in the large sense, helps the promise along, but it's not the, the, the promise of you'll be the father of many goyim. If there's just one nation, it's not many nations. But the line, the line goes through Sarah. Our friends in Islam believe the line goes through Ishmael. Of course. That fight continues. But what does it all mean? Come with me on a journey. A journey between time and space. All right. <clears throat> so I got my degree in Latin. That's why I keep the Latin up there because it helps me with my Greek. Okay. We're in the New Testament, Galatians chapter 4, verse 22 and following. Um. We are going to do Galatians sometime. I will do Galatians sometime with you. Um, but the argument in Galatians is that is that there was... What does it all mean, Basil? Um, Pastor Yeager, good to see you. Uh, what, we're, what we're going to see here is, is the greater meaning. It is written, it happened, that Abraham had two sons. One from uh, one out of the slave woman and one out of the free. But the son born of the slave woman was according to the flesh, was born according to the flesh. They took matters into their own hands. But the one born of the free was of the promise. Here comes the answer to the question that we were asked earlier. Now, this is allegorical, okay? The two sons are the two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, and that's Hagar. Hagar's, let's take matters in the old own hands, do this and live, don't do, die. Old covenant, law. Bearing children for slavery, she is Hagar. One is Mount Sinai, bearing children who are slaves to the law. She was a slave, and her children are slaves to the law. Hey, buddy, what you doing? Why don't you get in your bed? Jump in your bed. In your bed. In your bed. Okay? No treat? Bed. Bed. But the Jerusalem above is free. Uh, she's your mother. So your church is your mama. God is your father. Church is your mama. Okay? Um, don't let anybody say anything bad about mama. Mama is the church. Okay? So two covenants. But the Jeru Jerusalem from above, I know, is free. She is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear and break forth and cry aloud, uh, who does not who are not in labor for the children of the desolate one will become more than the children, uh, but more, more than those of one who has a husband. Isaac was the child of promise. So he says, you brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. But just as that time, the, he who was born according to the flesh persecuted the one who born according to the spirit, so it is now. But now the tables have turned. Those that are enslaved are those that are recognizing themselves law keepers, good Jews, and who would Judaize and make Jew and make law the children of God. As opposed to the Jerusalem, which is from above and free, which is the true children of Isaac and Abraham, children who are by faith. But what does scripture say? Ek bale, cast out the child, out, uh, the, uh, the, out the slave woman and her son. For the son of the slave woman will not inherit with the son of the free woman. So, brothers, we are not children of the slave. 
Hagar, Law, Sinai, Ten Commandments. And that is the answer to the question that was earlier. What if someone says we're back under the covenant or we need a new covenant in which we keep the Ten Commandments? That's Hagar. Been done, tried before, utter and complete failure. We're, we're children of the free woman. And therefore, it is for freedom that Christ sets you free. That is the birth of Ishmael, the oldest son of Abram, uh, but not the child of promise. Not the child of promise. The child of promise is, is, um, Isaac, Sarah's kid. He's the child of promise. All right. Tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel uh, for our Bible study on, and this will be on Genesis chapter 17 tomorrow. Remember to register for the Higher Things Virtual Conference. It is going to be so magnificent. So, so, so magnificent. You want to get to August 6th and 7th. Registration is online now. Just go to higherthings.org, hit that conference button, and you will see it. Um, it is spectacular. You want to see this. 20 hours of premium content. The best stuff. Great speakers like Fisk, um, Roseboro, uh, Matt Richard, um, Finker. You got it all. Got it all. It'll be, it'll be huge. Okay? So check it out. Higherthings.org. See you tomorrow. Same bat time. Same bat channel for more good gifts. More good gifts. Have a blessed day. And we will see you soon.